So this one, uh, you know, we have a negative outside the square root. We've uh, talked about it quite a few times. Nope. Multiply the negative into the square root. That definitely causes some issues. So you can't do that. Make sure you have your notes out. Your notes. Uh, so the negative does not go into the square root. So we think, like, what do we do? Well, we got a fraction 23 over 64. So if possibly we could simplify that fraction. We go for that. Can we simplify the fraction 23 over 64? Um, so 64 could go, could go to 8. I'm asking, can we simplify the fraction 23 over 64? Oh. Like, do 23 and 64 have any common factors? 23, what kind of a number is 23? Um, it's a prime number. So it's not going to share any factors with 64, unless 64 has a, a factor of 23 in it, which it doesn't. Okay, um, so now we have to use that property of square roots that we talked about before, that we learned last time. Okay, so we get the negative still. What is that property? If I have the square root of a fraction, a fraction inside a square root, how can I break that apart? Each part is... Square root of a fraction. And this new property it says you can take the square root of a fraction and change its appearance a little bit to what? Oh. Isn't it the Yeah? Isn't it like you could do the square root of 23 divided by the square root of 64? There you go. So you get the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So I was grading some of your reviews, and I can tell some of you have these calculators that will tell you what the simplified square root is, but you don't know how to do it. Don't be that person. Don't be the person who relies on their calculator and can't do it themselves. Okay? It's not a very hard thing, so don't resist learning something. You can learn this. It is not too difficult. Okay. Uh, we learn with multiplication and division. We can do this uh, separating. We can do this putting together. Right? We can take the square root of a fraction and turn it into the fraction of square roots. We can take a product of square roots. Right? A square root times a square root. We turn it into the square root of those two numbers multiplied together. They're not crazy complicated properties to practice and learn. Okay. So now that's the uh, square root of 23 over the square root of 64. 23 does not have a square root, but? does, and the square root of 64 is? 8. All right, so you get the square root of 23 over 8. Negative square root of 23 over 8. Okay. Uh, number 15. Okay, so this is just evaluating for given values of x, y, and z. So we get x squared plus y z, which is y times z, says that x is negative 2. So we have negative 2 squared um, plus y, which is 8 times z, which is 1 half. So when it says that x is negative 2, and x, whatever the number is that is x, is supposed to get squared. Well, if I square negative 2, what is negative 2 squared? Mm -hmm. Is it 4? Or is it negative 4? 4. <coughs> 4. Josie? 4. 4. Two 4s. Okay, it's a positive 4, right? Why is that? Josie? Because when you square a number, it's the exact number. So negative 1 is negative 1. So you got a negative 2 times a negative 2, negative times negative positive. So we got positive 4 there. 4. Uh, what is one half times eight? One half of eight. Four. Four. So you got four plus four inside the square root. Get the square root of eight now. Four plus four is eight. All right. Now eight does not have a nice square root, but we can factor eight as yeah. um, four and two. Four and two. The square root of four is two. And then we have this square root of two left over. There's nothing you can do to simplify the square root of two. Decimal, and just as I would learn to simplify these squares. Okay? 
Yeah, I mean, look at how much there is to learn here. One step, really, if you're using your calculator, resisting the urge to learn this, it doesn't even take much. Don't handicap yourself and lose credit because I'm not going to give credit to people who do not have the work show even if they have the right answer from their calculator. Okay? Simply, figure eight. We know how to factor eight. You know how to factor numbers in general, right? I should be able to give you any number. You can factor it. Uh, factor it in such a way that one of the numbers has a square root. Notice I have the square root of a number times the square root of a number, the square root of four times the square root of two. Now they are the square root of eight. If you go backwards, you can break them apart like this. The square root of four is two. All right. Are there any questions about that? Because I'm noticing like a surprising number of people are having trouble. And it's not a bad thing, but also I can tell some of it is because I feel like you have this crutch you can lean on the calculator. Maybe you don't have to learn it, but it's just one little thing. And it's not always going to be something your calculator can do for you. Any questions about, I just learned two properties so far. You got multiplying square roots together, dividing square roots by each other. Anything? Okay, well, first thing you'll notice square root of 27, not a nice number, so we're not going to really take the square root of 27 and get some decimal square root of 3, six, three. Uh, There's several different ways we could go about simplifying this if we wanted to, but I'm just going to go straight for the property that we learned last time, which was when we have the square root uh, of a numerator or the square root of the denominator, we can take it to be the square root of the fraction. Bring them into the same square root. What's 27 divided by 3? 9. 9, yeah. So that becomes the square root of 9, which is 3. The square root of 9 is 3. Right. Make sense? Uh, square root of 4 ninths. I'm going to show you uh, another way to look at this, but this could become the square root of 4 over the square root of 9. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. 2 thirds. And it makes sense that 2 thirds is the square root of 4 ninths. Because, right? like, for, for instance, why, is, why do we know that, the, that 3 is the square root of 9? Because 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. The number multiplies by itself, it's the square root of that number. So if 2 thirds is the square root of 4 ninths, it should mean that 2 thirds times 2 thirds is 4 ninths. Let's check it out. 2 thirds times 2 thirds. How do we multiply fractions? Spread across. Spread across. So 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9. So there you can even see like a, a justification of why this square root of the fraction is the same as the square root of the numerator or the square root of the denominator. Because the answer would be it just multiplied them straight across. And so the square root of four nice back would be three thirds. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to show you kind of a, a complex expression and we're going to simplify it. So let's say we have two plus the square root of 8 over 6. Right. So this is what I call the weeping kitten uh, theorem. Okay, plays into exactly this. So the weeping kitten theorem says you cannot say, for instance, cancel this 2 with this 6 and call this a 1 and call this a 3. Okay? No, no, no. The reason you can simplify a fraction is because they have what in common? The like, same denominator. That would be, I, would, I could add fractions because they have the same denominator. Why can I simplify a single fraction like uh, uh, 15 over 9? Why can I simplify this fraction? Because the numerator and denominator have what? Common factor. The factor, yeah, com common factor of three. They are both multiples of three. This is a factor of three. If I divide it by three, I get five. If I divide this by three, I get three, so I get five thirds. Okay. Now, two does have a factor of two, and six has a factor of two, but two is not the only thing in the numerator, right? It's not the only thing in the numerator. Cadence? Well, then No, because it, then it, uh, again, we can't say, let's see, it proved to you that it's the square, even if it was the square root of 8 over the square, or, or over 6, square root of 8 over 6, 
does not become the square root of 4 over 3. Okay? Because the short answer is the 6, not the square root. We just learned a principle that says we can basically do that if it's the square root of 8 over the square root of 6, not just the number 6. Right? Uh, actually, let's take a little bit of a better example, like the square root of 9 over 3. Yeah, square root of 9 over 3, let's do that. Let's do it two different ways. One way we can be really sure is uh, correct, and the way that we're going to find out can't be true. Square root of 9 is what? 3. 3. Okay, I know that that's, I can do that. I can take the square root of 9, of course. 3 over 3. This should come out to be 1. If I take 3 and divide it into 9, I'll get the square root of 3. Is the square root of 3, 1? No. Mm -hmm. See what I did there? I took, some, I took something that's inside the square root and divided it by something that's not inside the square root. And got something I know can't be right because I just did it this other way. It's a little more common sense way. I got 1. I know I should get 1. Square root of 3 is not 1. More than 1. Okay. So, Again, we cannot divide something inside the square root by something not inside the square root. Okay? The main thing here is that we need to find common factors in the numerator and denominator, not just parts of the numerator. Okay? And we can't consider like 8 has a factor of 2. It doesn't matter unless they're either both outside the square root or both inside the square root. Okay? So uh, we need to see. Maybe if there's a factor of 2 here and a factor of 2 here, is there a factor of 2 in this number? We don't know yet because it's just the square root of 8. So to see if it has a factor of 2, we need to simplify it and take a square root of a, one of the factors of 8 so that it's no longer inside the square root. So we'll simplify the 8. That becomes the square root of what times what? 4 times 2. Four times two. Over 6, 2 plus, now the square root of 4 two. is 2. So this is a factor of 2, obviously. This is a factor of 2. The definition of a factor is that it multiplies by something else. Right? It's multiplying by the square root of 2. So this guy here, this, this term, 2 times root 2, has a factor of 2 because it has a 2 being multiplied by something. And 6 also has a factor of 2. So since they all have a factor of 2, we could factor out a, a factor of 2 from all of them. But I'm not going to do it the way most people do because it, it, it leads to a lot of this, a lot of this, just crossing things out like this. Okay? I'm going to concentrate on the, the real math of it. Rather than shortcutting ourselves and not knowing exactly what's going on, the reason why we could say simplify 15 over 9 is because we divided them both by 3. Right? This was not one by 3. We, we divided out the factor of 3. Even that was a little bit of a shortcut. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the numerator, factor out the 2, undistribute the 2. So if I were to distribute it back in, I would get 2 plus root 2, or 2 plus 2 root 2. So I factor out the 2. 1 plus root 2. Just pausing and double checking here. If I were to multiply the 2 by the parentheses, I would distribute it. Right? Remember distribution. Okay. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times the square root of 2 is 2 times the square root of 2. So just distributing that 2 shows me that what I've just written there in that step is correct. It's equal to what we have above. Okay. So 2 times 1 plus root 2 over 6. Now this can become, if we make a little more room, we can see this is 2 over 6 times 1 plus root 2 over 1. Agree? We've got two fractions multiplied by each other. How do we multiply fractions? Straight across. Straight across. So 2 times, well, we'd have to multiply it by the, this whole thing. That's why we put a parentheses around it here. 2 times 1 plus root 2 over 6 times 1. 2 times 1 plus root 2 in the numerator. 6 times 1 is 6 in the denominator. Right? <coughs> so now what I've done is I've pulled over this over here, this fraction, and it can be simplified. How, what would this simplify to? 2 over 6 would simplify to the fraction 
One third, one over three. So one over three, one plus root two over one. Multiply these back together and we get one plus root two over three. I don't write all these steps because I expect you to do all these steps every time for the rest of your lives. Because it does take longer. But rather than say like explaining it to you, explaining it to you in a way that does not highlight this truth, okay, and kind of setting you up for confusion in the future, at least possible confusion. Okay? If you just understood this from the beginning, like if I just cross things out and you're like, oh I see what he's doing there, that would be fine. But that's not going to be the case for most people. So we're going to do this for a while, and then we'll start to kind of shorten it up after we get the grasp of this concept. Johnny? So why can't you just find the square root of 8 and then add that to 2? Well, for one thing, let's, we have to start with the assumption that we don't want to get a decimal. That would give us a decimal. We're confusing square roots with, with halves, right? Square root of A is, is uh, some decimal, not four. Yeah. Yes? So you got the two times one plus the square root of two? Yep. Because uh, Sorry. it would still be, okay, I get it, because it's Is two it times. Yeah. Wait, <coughs> how did you get from two? From there to there. Yeah. Okay, so I'll call it a couple of different things. Officially, we call it factoring out of two. Okay. okay. You might like undistributing a two. I'm taking the two that this has, the two that this has, I'm taking it out of the parentheses, putting it right there. Okay. So that if I were to distribute the two to the one, I get two. Two to the square root of two, I get two times square root of oh, okay. two. All right. All right. Questions? Very good questions. I love questions. Questions help us learn. Yeah. All right. So, so, I mean, even here, we need to be able to simplify these square roots uh, with our brains. I don't know, if maybe your calculator will simplify an expression like that. I don't think I've seen one that does that yet. I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure there's an app that does it. But, uh, yeah, we're not, we don't need to give over every power to apps and calculators. Question, Gina? So, in Somehow this is the square root of four, you're saying? Well, just inside the square root, because two times. Two times the square root of two is the square root of four? Would that be? No, two times the square root of two wouldn't be the square root of four. Remember, it comes from here. In, in order to multiply a, the inside of a square root by something, the thing that we're multiplying by has to be also inside the square root. Right? And so if we work it backwards, two. Has to, we have to write it as a square root. Well, 2 is the square root of 4. And now since it's written as a square root, I can multiply square root of 4 times the square root of 2, get the square root of 8, which is where all this came from in the first place. Okay. We were simplifying the square root of 8, write it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. The square root of 4 is 2, 2 times the square root of 2. Does that make sense? Sure? Okay. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Do a little practice in there. Uh, get uh, 6 plus square root 27 over 15. Alright, I see some good progress. I see a little bit of uh, burning some walls as well, so let's just work this out together. Uh, let's simplify the square root as much as possible to start with. So you get 6 plus square root of what three. 9 times 3. Nine three. Okay, the reason that simplifies is because the square root of 9 is 3. Right, so we take, just take the square root of 9 and we get 6 plus 3 root 3 over 15. Okay. So now 
for a second, just ignoring the square root of three because it's, it doesn't really have any useful factors in it that I can use, okay? I'm just looking at the six and the three. What factor do those have in common that I could factor out or undistribute? A three. You could try for six, but then you know six doesn't factor out a three very well. I would argue it doesn't. It, when you write what you would have next, it wouldn't be any simpler. So we'll factor out a three, so that if we were to distribute the three back into this, we would just get six plus three root three again. So what would the inside of these parentheses look like? Two plus the square root three. 2 plus the square root of 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times the square root of 3 is 3 times the square root of 3. Next, okay, here we go. 15. All right. Now I'm going to write this as two fractions again, and maybe next time we'll skip that step because, okay, I get it. I see what's happening here. So, Sean, did you want to tell us what two fractions yeah. we would be multiplying together? So, 3 over 15 uh -huh. times 2, or, yeah, 2 plus square root of 3 over 1. Exactly. And then simplify it. Simplify that one right there, yeah. that 3 over 15. Simplifies as 1 over 5? Yeah. Right? And so we get 1 over 5 times the square root of 2, sorry, it's not the square root of 2, 2 plus the square root of 3 over 1, and that becomes 2 plus the square root of 3 over, one, over sorry, 5, because a 5 times 1 is 5. But, like I said, we'll write it maybe this one last time, unless you like writing it that way, and it helps it make more sense to you, absolutely keep doing that. But uh, can we see how... Like this whole thing is a little longer than it needs to be. I can see that this 3 over 15 would come over here. I would simplify the 3 and the 15, finding a common factor. And then I would move on to this guy here, right? So maybe instead of all of this, we could just say, all right, 3 and 15, they both have a factor of 3. And so I'll write it as uh, 1 and 5. So just 1 times 2 plus root 3 is 2 plus root 3 over 5. Shorten it up a little bit. Cadence? I'm still kind of confused. Okay. About how you're like putting the parentheses in that around it and like 2 plus and the square root of 3. Yeah, square root of 3. Okay. So we're like where this came from? Yeah. Alright, so from from this step here to this step, what I did was factor out a three. All right, and the way you can test and see, like, you know, how does that make sense? Let's just go back from this step back to this one. Okay, that would be distributing the three. Three times two would give me the six, and three times the square root of three would give me three times the square root of three. So to get from here to there just need to do this, like this distributing step in reverse. They take the 3 out of the 6 and the 3 out of the 3, just factoring out that common factor of 3 that they both have. So, uh, so if you take a little aside here, like uh, 10x plus 15. Using 10x plus 15, we know I'm distributing with, with uh, expressions that have x in them. What do these both have in common that we could factor out? Five. A five. So five comes out. Cadence, you tell me, because what, what we know is going to happen, or should be able to happen, is that I take the five and distribute it to a couple of things here. So when I'm done, I get 10x plus 15. So what would that first one have to be? So that five times this is 10x. 2x. Okay, and I'm going to have to distribute it to something else. It's going to have to be plus something. Three. Okay. That part makes sense? So we're doing the same thing here. Like, before I write this down, I'm doing the same kind of a thing. Six and three, what do they have in common? They've got a three in common, so I put a three there. Right? Same question, what do I put here and here so that if I were to distribute the three to both of these things, I would get this, just like we did with 10x plus 15. Right? It would have to be three times what to get six? One. Three times what? 
to get six? Two. Two. Okay, plus it would be th three times something here, something would have to be here, so that what I wind up with is three times the square root of three. Square root of three, just the square root of three. tell I'm having trouble understanding like how does one of these numbers not have a square root anymore and one of these numbers does have a square root at the end okay it's a simple answer why does one of these numbers not have a square root over it because we took the square root of a number and it is just some other number okay square root of four square root of two we can multiply those together under the same square root to get four times two square root of four times square root of two becomes square root of four times two square root of eight and in the next step the reason it looks like this, well, why is that? Why does it look like this now, Sean? Because the square root of 4 is 2. So we just took the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. That's why it looks like 2 times the square root of 2 now. OK, now we're looking at these two terms, and we're saying to ourselves, what can we factor out? We can do 2 parentheses 3 plus square root of 2. Got it. And I know that's right, because if I were to distribute the 2 to the 3, I would get 6. If I distribute then the 2 to the square root of 2, 2 times square root of 2. All I have to do is distribute to make sure I've done this right. OK, so now, like I said, we won't write all this uh, two fractions multiplied and all those extra steps, because I can see what's going to happen. Clearly, this 2 is going to be over this 2. Okay, I can only do that because this 2 is multiplied. Not added, not subtracted, not divided, but multiplied by something else. And when we do that, we can separate them. Because what we'd really be saying is, well, these are, this is the product of two fractions like we've done two times before this. So the 2 would divide the 2. And what's 2 divided by 2? One. So they're just, they both have a factor of 2. They are 2. So they both become 1. So what's left is 3 plus the square root of 2. Over 1, but I mean, anything over 1 is itself. So 3 plus the square root of 2. Talk about the square root of x. What's the square root of x? There's no way I could know. Is there any way you can know what the square root of x was? If you know what x is. Sure, if you knew what x was, you could take the square root of it, right? But only until then will we be able to simplify this anymore. But what's the square root of x squared? Well, x squared is x times x. So what's the square root? X must be X. For anybody who's not sure about that, thinks, I, don't know, I don't think that could be right. How could you know that? Let's take 9, for example. Square root of 9. What's the square root of 9? 3. Why is the big question. Why is the square root of 9 3? Because 3 times 3 equals 9. Okay, so the same exact uh, thought process can tell us this is true. Square root of X squared is x. We know that x squared means x times x, right? But why? Why is the square root of x squared x? You're trying to say like this is squaring and this is the opposite of squaring. Yeah. Yeah, like so they like undo each other. Yeah. 
That's a good argument too. They undo each other. They are inverse functions. Squaring is one thing and square rooting is exactly the opposite, right? So it must be x. And also because this, just like the square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9, the square root of x squared is x because x times x is x squared, okay? 